Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio and thanks so much for tuning in and joining me today. In this video, we're gonna be talking about IT certs. Specifically, what are the top trending IT certs that you should be getting? Remember, of course, to subscribe, clicking on the button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. All right, so you may be somebody who's working in technology, you're already working in an IT job of some sort, or you may be looking at getting into an IT job and you just wanna know what are the top certs to get. So in this video, we're gonna be talking to a company that focuses on IT recruitment. This is the Frank Recruitment Group that have uh, presence all around the world. We're gonna be talking to one of their executives based out of the American region of the business. It's gonna be really, really great. And let's get into that right now. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Rowan, for making the time. So you're obviously from the Frank Group. Uh, maybe you can just get started by giving me a bit of an introduction about yourself, uh, what you do, and uh, also what the company does. I am Rowan O'Grady. I'm the president of Frank Recruitment Group in North America, covering the United States and Canada. The Frank Recruitment Group really is a group of specialist and niche um, tech staffing companies. Um, we have seven different brands, each one of the brands um, dedicated and aligned to a particular technology. So for example, Jefferson Frank is aligned to the Azure ecosystem, Mason Frank to Salesforce, Nigel Frank to the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, I'm based in Toronto. Um, I've worked in the staffing industry for over 25 years. So obviously the, the point of this discussion is to talk about uh certifications, IT certs and things of that nature. Can you maybe just give me give me your expertise, having obviously worked in the industry for quite some time, for somebody who's starting out in technology or perhaps somebody who's in technology and is wanting to understand what certs they should be, uh, I guess, investing in or looking to, to get uh, into their resume, into their, into their repertoire, what uh, certs would you recommend for IT professionals and beginners or even more advanced? It's a it depends answer, but yeah, it, it does depend on what field you're interested in getting into or what product that you'd like to focus on. Um, I would say as a starting point, if you want to cast a really wide net or you're totally new to IT as a career, the Comp TIA IT Fundamentals Plus certification can teach you the basics. If you were looking at um, what's in demand, um, Cloud tech professionals are in the shortest supply right now, and that's not going to change. That's going to continue on. And there's a massive need for more and more cloud skills because of the digital acceleration and the migration to online services that has spiked so rapidly for obvious reasons. Um, cloud tech is the, it feels very much so that it's the future of technology. So if you haven't really picked a particular ecosystem or specialism, I would say taking financial certs related to cloud is a great starting point. Um, for a broad, as we would say, non-vendor aligned overview into cloud infrastructure and deployment, you can look at the Comp TIA Cloud Plus certification. Um, specifically for Microsoft, they offer a range of role aligned certifications that can help you progress on your chosen career path if you're just starting out. Um, so there we would recommend the Microsoft certified Azure fundamentals as a really good choice. And then there's more focused financial Microsoft certifications available for people thinking about pursuing a career in other fields like data, security, business apps or whatnot. Um, and then finally, I'd say the AWS certified cloud practitioner is another option for people looking for a broad introductory certification into the cloud space. From my perspective, uh, having worked with a lot of IT professionals across various industries, some have got a lot of certs, some don't have too many, um, some have got a lot of experience, some don't have very much experience at all. So would you say that employers uh, value certificates more over experience or is it a combination? Um, I guess, what would, would you say somebody who has more experience is seen more favorably over somebody who has more certs or vice versa? Could you maybe give a bit of an overview about that? It's a great question. It, it, uh, I'm certain to say it depends. It, it, it actually almost depends on what stage of the recruitment process that you're looking at. I'll try and explain. So you, you're right on what you said there. The, the number one thing that 
employers are looking for when they're hiring an IT professional is the practical hands-on experience. And at the end of the day, that trumps everything. But if you don't have that much experience, say if you're cross-training from one tech into another tech or you're in the early days of your career, then the certifications really are a great way and maybe the only way at times to showcase your knowledge um, or expertise. Also, the, the actual earning of the certifications shows your commitment to your professional. You know, we know that technology moves fast. Employers want to see that you're dedicated to keeping your skills up to date, you're adaptable and you're keen to learn new things. So, you know, there's a benefit in even just doing the certification or, or, or being seen to have done it. Um, employers, when they're hiring, I think there is a tendency to gravitate towards professionals that have the certifications just simply because it's an easy kind of industry acknowledged way of rating or classifying what a candidate knows. And that's increasingly common as technology becomes more as, as you could say, like democratized. You've got companies or business that are not tech-based, but they're hiring really high-tech professionals because of digital transformation. Um, so now we've got a scenario where you've got hiring managers um, that they themselves are not particularly tech savvy and they find that certifications are a, a good shorthand way to just help some qualified candidates. Um, and going on from that, you actually see employers setting certifications as a prerequisite for the candidates. So in some instances, you could be very, very experienced and capable, but you have to get the certifications if you want to employ, uh, apply for certain roles at certain organizations i actually find that actually is, is the case as well that definitely when i when i'm interviewing people I've, I've interviewed various people who have a lot of certs and then when you start to discuss things with them and go into the detail you realize that they don't have the practical experience or anything to sort of back that up but then i've also seen that the flip side can also be true so i definitely think a combination of the two having the certs sort of helps people get people in the door so having those having those certs uh is a more sure way to i guess land uh, land that interview uh, as well. I think uh, that's really good. If we think about, I guess, specific certs here around vendors. Um, so I guess the two big ones be Microsoft or Cisco. You've got others, of course, like VMware, you've got the AWS and all of these others. But would you think um, for somebody who's wanting to know, well, what certs should I be getting, whether that be in cloud, whether that be on on-premise, um, should they be looking at the Microsoft side of things or Cisco or combinations of the two? But do you see uh, a mix between those two or should one be preferred over the other? Maybe maybe an individual has a particular interest or passion or a connection into to one over the other. But in terms of how many opportunities there are out there, I would say there's more open roles that need Microsoft certifications than Cisco, just purely because Microsoft has a broader customer base. It's a wider product range. So naturally there's more demand. Um, there's simply, as we'd say, a greater surface area across um, which the expertise is needed. Yeah, so I think if you were being calculated about it and you could pick and it didn't make any difference to you, I would just say, you know, if there's more opportunities out there, maybe go down the Microsoft path. But at the end of the day, there's a, a, a shortage of candidates almost everywhere. So maybe it doesn't really matter. Obviously with, with COVID and people working remotely a lot more than before, uh, would that be a big push you think for, I guess companies in general are embracing or, or they, they were forced to embrace the cloud perhaps a little bit more than, you know, they, they were sped into that a little bit more than perhaps before all of this stuff happened. Would you see that as, as a better argument then for, for IT professionals to invest more in cloud, given that the industry is now moving into that space even a lot more than they were perhaps before? I would say a categorical yes, they should. Um, you know, we've seen um, talk about the di digital transformation was going on for years before um, COVID came along, but obviously, and I'm not telling anybody anything that they don't know, but when everybody suddenly had to work from home and the physical office space wasn't what it was before and servers were not what they were before, um, it suddenly became very obvious to every company and even the ones where they were very, very large and the migration to cloud would be a 
project size that you put in the category of that's an enterprise decision. So let's maybe talk about it for a while and um, think about it and decide whether you want to invest in it or not. And then, and it's, you know, something that some companies just were not getting around to. You know, you think about some of the very large global banks and um, financial services companies that uh, I could think of where um, they have suddenly a real urgency say we need to migrate to the public cloud. And that's what they're doing, which is triggering literally hundreds of roles within individual organizations in an area that just didn't exist before. So for sure that's happened um, and will continue to happen. And even when you, you know, you've, you've got the migration completed, then it's not like the work stops. Um, there are permanent roles and will continue on. Yeah, so I would say for sure that's an area to, to focus you know, your education and building your experience because it's not going away. And from what we could see, I'd say that that is the probably the best bet. And, and I would say as well in terms of earning potential, being a cloud architect is a highly lucrative career path. So, you know, going down that path, getting your AWS certified, solutions architect um, or the outer solutions architect expert certificate they're great things to do and it'll just help you when you're looking for the next role um, and get you at least to the interview stage and then then it's over to you well look uh thanks so much uh rowan thank you for spending the time really appreciate it and um we'll talk to you next time well i hope you found that helpful i know that i certainly did and now i have a better understanding of the certs that are the must have certs for everybody who works in technology. So that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Do what you do across the social medias by liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking on my face right over there. And also check out some of my other videos so that you stay up to date with all things tech. We'll see you next time.